बिन बताए रास्तों पे कहीं Hey guys welcome to a breakdown of Khoja which is my latest release um i know you guys have been asking for this and i've actually always really been wanting to do a breakdown so uh, today's finally the day and uh, this is the first time i'm doing this so it's a bit new for me uh but yeah let's go if you haven't heard the track yet go check it out uh let me know what you think and uh, i think the breakdown will make a lot more sense if you check out the track in in its entirety before this so yeah um let's dive into it uh i think the first thing i would like to just say is that uh i read this quote online which like perfectly describes what the song is about but basically uh they say letting um letting someone be themselves is the loudest way to love them you know and that's basically what khoja talks about that's exactly what it is about and that's kind of what i wanted to build in the song as well this kind of um explorative journey almost you know where you can go somewhere and explore travel somewhere new you know just be yourself and um, i feel like i had to remind myself of this also quite often when i was doing the song because um it was quite a quite a quite a vibe for me to go from uh being the composer to also being the producer because as a composer i had a fully different idea about how the song should have been and as a producer i felt like i had a fully different idea but somewhere along the line along the way uh both these parts of me met and the message eventually was that the song literally talks about just being yourself and doing what you want so why don't you just go ahead and do that and uh, i kind of stopped overthinking it and just did whatever the hell i wanted uh, with it Uh, and just really enjoyed the process also and this is what turned out eventually um so yeah let's jump into it so the first thing is um it's pretty wild but uh, the song was entirely written before i actually got to the production stage and when i did write it i felt like uh, i always played it like free on the piano not really to a groove or to a track so it didn't really have much of like a timing structure to it like there was always a lot of free balling happening so i would play the first bit a bit slower then speed up a little later uh when i started doing the track i was like you know one tempo isn't cutting it for the whole song i need multiple tempo changes so i mean it's pretty wild but you can see here there are like 1 2 3 4 5 6 tempo changes going on through the entire song uh but the idea wasn't to like do something fancy or change tempos or do something unique it was just so that the composition is kind of serviced and uh, each part of the composition gets to live its life like fairly and you know no part has to compromise like you don't have to slow down the chorus just so the verse sounds fine or, or speed up the verse just so the chorus sounds fine i thought maybe just like serve each part to itself and uh, i think the trick was on the challenge was to kind of make it feel like there are no tempo changes really happening but there are a bunch of tempo changes happening there's a bit of a time signature change also which is also not by choice it's just how the song was and how it turned out but uh, yeah so to jump into it uh maybe we can check out like some of the synths and stuff i think the idea today is also because i've never done this before uh maybe not to get in like too deep but just kind of give you guys an overview of like what the different stuff that's playing in here is and kind of how it all interacts with each other i think that's where i want to kind of go with this you know uh each element by itself might not mean much but i think how they all talk to each other kind of is what really makes a track sing and uh, i think that's what this video is kind of going to be about just kind of take you guys through what the what the sound what the palette is or like basically what the family of sounds are in this song and uh, why it sounds the way it does so yeah let's jump into it as you can see my session is sessions are always like color coded and labeled and everything cuz i'm a bit of a i have a bit of an ocd like that but uh, yeah so in the start the opening start that you hear it starts with this like sample i got of splice and then the whole arpeggio that kicks in actually made up of a few parts this is the main arpeggio we have a supporting like chord hit for it and the 
is like a another layer which is a little more like bellish lullabyish and then we have an interesting element it's a bit soundscapey Now, I mean, uh, yeah. So this element is actually the only element that kind of really carries through all the way till the chorus hits, and it's the only element that really has a swing to it. Everything else is quite straight. Turn, taka, 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 turn, taka, 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 turn, taka. But this is so it's a very subtle kind of swing in the back. So I mean you'll see ahead when I reach the chorus but the chorus is where like the swing really kicks in but this element kind of stays the same. Um so that's kind of where the start is uh and otherwise it's just the vocals you know you you've heard those. Then batae raaston pe kahi it's a bunch of reverb really and stuff like that. This is not the mix this is the session that went for the mix so it's not going to sound exactly the way it did uh, after mixing but yeah Then after the pre-chorus, when we basically get into the first khoja, I wanted to kind of have this diving effect, you know, this mm, like khoja, like the first khoja saying like, you know, kind of lose yourself, uh, that energy. I just wanted it to be a very like, I don't know, like falling into something, kind of a vibe. Uh, so I had this bass, which kind of drops to really give that. and layered up with a few other things that uh, add on to that same kind of that same kind of effect uh but these all kind of sweep up and kind of mixed in with that is what gives it that effect you know that's then just going tuck you know so that's how it enters uh and then there's this one synth that carries the whole thing along. some some impact stuff just to add like a little spice and color uh and then we reach the before we hit the actual chorus i wanted it to start pumping so i automated in like uh, a lot of the elements uh threshold i pulled them down so that they start kind of getting side chain by the kick on top here you know if you notice there's a kick for side chain here that's basically side chaining all the compressors that i have applied on whichever tracks i wanted to side chain so i make everything kind of uh, get low cut and open up the frequency so they start feeling a little brighter 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 and they also lose a lot of the bottom end so that when the chorus actually kicks in it has a lot more bottom end uh, it feels like it has a lot more bottom end uh, i mean for me essentially music is a, a lot of it is about contrast and i believe that a section can only sound as good as a section before it allows it to be to sound um so i mean you know if you had way too much bass happening in the previous section the chorus would wouldn't sound as like deep and bassy because you've already kind of given that away so uh, by kind of doing these kind of tricks where you take away the low end just before the chorus hits and stuff it just feels like a lot more impactful when it actually hits so this is that pumping effect <laughs> and everything has it from the back including the bass khoja so it kind of sets you up a little nicely you know like okay okay where is this going you know it's kind of that's the energy like wo it till now it was super dreamy and super like okay it's going this like wave and then suddenly it starts pumping it's kind of like whoa okay i didn't expect that uh so i i really enjoyed that so i just did that as well side chain my backing vocals also i love doing that kind of stuff uh but yeah this is the backing vocal stack by itself oh. in the final mix you'll hear that it's like quite high cut it opens up in the chorus but for here right now it's fully open tere kwa Yeah. 
and then we jump into the chorus Koja. so the break is just a collection of like these two two bass sounds pa da da ba pa dum dum i i don't know i just like heard that in my head i really wanted to put it in there uh it's a sudden break from the rest of the track uh, i mean till now it's been super ambient and super flowy and chill and then suddenly it kind of hits with this random thing and i was like what am i doing really but i kind of enjoyed it so i left it in uh it comes with the kick and snare also and uh, there's nothing really else going on besides that in that break besides just my vocal koja so i wanted it to like really pull out completely this mic is like being stuck on yeah so yeah and uh, and then the, the the once the chorus kicks in uh, the groove is fairly basic you know just some hats to like super straight also just the hats are like loud soft loud soft to give it that dynamic slightly and then there's some percussions to now if you notice that element i told you in the start which had the swing that kind of adds more swing to it as the exact same thing that was in the start So it kind of retains a sense of familiarity even though you can't really probably hear it in the chorus but it kind of it retains a sense of familiarity but it's also still now servicing this new part which is all like swung you know Also the same the same synth that we had here which is quite like straight it kind of comes back in a similar palette but swung now You know so it's kind of like retaining the same color the same kind of sonics overall but just going somewhere else with it you know uh and then of course like the baseline um when his baseline came to me I'll just play it to you guys I'll play it with the groove <laughs> Yeah so when I first came up with this baseline I was like man what are you doing how can you put a baseline like that in a song that's all like dreamy and it's supposed to be about getting lost and stuff and you know being yourself and then I was like like I was saying earlier right I it, I told myself that the song is literally talking about being yourself and doing exactly what you want maybe I should stop overthinking it and do what I want you know and uh, I just went ahead and ran with it and uh i i i'm not going to lie it was quite a task to like really go from this ambient thing to this like swung chorus and kind of find all this you know when you kind of break it down backwards it feels like okay it's so natural but uh like you know okay this sound the same thing swung here it's fine but like to actually get there and figure it out took me a little while to be honest and uh, a lot of trial and error adding elements to moving elements and uh, that's where it finally got but yeah so eventually that's the that's the whole groove the 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 kick and the rhythm the bass uh we have that little swung thing going on the swung synths you know and then i also wanted to add some like pulsy movement so we have this there's a little dun 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 And once you hear the whole section, essentially, um, 
you know if I just mute the vocals out because the vocals are pretty clear otherwise but I had to add these to kind of impact the chord changes it just helps push it kind of on the one of every like bar it just kind of kind of seals the deal there for for that um and there's this like upbeat pulse going on that's constant the backing vocals are the same that was playing in the pre-chorus it's the same it's just that before the chorus hits in the pre-chorus they kind of uh, uh what do you call it they kind of high cut and then they open up completely when the chorus kicks in otherwise they're the, they're the exact same performance so that's the chorus Um Yeah Now going to the bridge. Uh, this was really interesting. I struggled a lot with this. Initially, I was gonna like kind of leave it more ad libby and not have any tempo to it, not have any scale to it. I spent a while trying to figure out what should the interlude be or like should there be a music piece. Um, but nothing felt natural. Uh, what felt natural to me was just like kind of jumping straight into the into the bridge. Uh, but the bridge like starts on like a B major um, and. Uh, the the last chord of this is an e flat major and i was like you know how do i kind of transition without making it sound like weird and what do i do and the entire unlock came down to these few notes for me which did the job completely it was just this that took it from e flat to the b you know if you just kind of hear a few of these maybe together That's it. We're in B, and I was like, okay, we're in B. We're home. Maybe we can just jump straight into the bridge. So that's what I did. Uh, I just kind of left this little ambient little section to kind of simmer down and drop into that because it was gonna. It is quite a different section, and it also says something. else so but that's basically what's what's talking to each other there is like a little bass along with this little gamey synth uh there's a synth pad here and the pianos basically are doing the major chunk of like the heavy lifting <laughs> There's some pads here. Some effects. And now we reach the bridge, uh, which is the piano arpeggio, which I love. Uh, I I got into a full ego mode when I was recording it, and I must have done I don't know how many takes, how many takes. I I lost count honestly but I was like I have to get it in one take and I tried and tried and tried and it was really difficult and I think I probably forgotten how to play it now but I felt really happy when I got it uh, because I think it sounds really pretty but this is what the piano arpeggio sounds like okay no uh so this is this is kind of essentially the part uh the the bridge melody jo sahara chahe tu kabhi so to keep it like flowing keep the movement going this is the arpeggio that i kind of did with it tere raho mein main hu wahi jo sahara chahe by itself some 
ambient pads. just to give it a little depth and you know a little more dreaminess and then uh, on top over here we have these synths that kind of reminisce of the start of the song sound harmonically yeah it's it's the same sounds this is the start if you notice how much how much slower it is in the start but yeah this is it's kind of just to kind of maintain like the sonic identity like i was saying you know it's so it's because we're also kind of going back to the pre chorus which has the same sound so it's a good way good idea to kind of keep that similar color going you know cuz here we're back in the chorus so it feels like one family essentially and here we have some backing vocals as well some really weird backing vocals जो सहारा चाहे तू कभी as really strange when i made it and then i went, went, went back to the recording booth and i heard it back and i was like what <laughs> but i mean sometimes you make stuff and it's it's weird and it's fun but uh, yeah so kind of if you hear it with the piano this is what it sounds like teri raah mein main hu jo sahara chahe tu kabhi and then it goes back to the pre uh, pre chorus ta tera ja tu chal bhai just with like a bass this time jis lamhe mein tu ruke sab yaas bhai i added some more okay. super dark and moody you know i, I think it's it's also it's kind of just to retain this this whole part is little piano heavy it's just to kind of keep it flowing across the section so it joins the sections together feel you sonic color still there but when you hear the track actually you're going to be hearing this stuff with the bass so your brain might not necessarily or yours may not necessarily go to the pianos at that time but that is what's kind of keeping it in that same family and also retaining the mood and the color you know along with these little pads and stuff that's going on and uh, and yeah and then it jumps back into the pre chorus just with a kick this time so it just like kind of keeps oh, ja. from the get go it's kind of like pumping oh ja the bass is already pumping you know oh ja not the backing vocals though they pump only like now Yeah, and this time I didn't want to bring the da 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 the whole thing. So I just kind of like went all the way till the end with the opening up the highs and just got the second like da 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 and jumped landed into the chorus. Uh, I don't know, it just sounded better to me that way. And uh, and yeah, that's basically uh, kind of an insight on what I did in Koja. Um, I haven't like. uh gone super deep into it and like ran through the automations and like the plugins and where i got what sounds from and stuff like that i didn't know if i should get that deep uh but if you if you guys are interested and you want to like really like get into the fiber of it and how i like kind of put stuff together i'll be happy to do another video on that so just let me know and uh maybe i could hook that up i finally learned how to like set do this uh 
this in itself was a challenge for me to figure out first but i finally i i kind i think i know how to do this now so uh, i could probably do it for more songs as well but yeah thank you guys for tuning in and um, i hope this helped uh, all of you guys who wanted to get a breakdown of koja uh, i hope it's given you some insight on how the song was put together and uh, yeah until next time